And that's Paul's whole argument regarding circumcision. A warning against Christ plus circumcision. Against Christ plus anything. It is only Christ. Christ plus nothing. Christ plus no one. I love that verse. It's virtually in the center of Colossians chapter 3 verse 11. One translation reads, there is only Christ and he is everything. I hope you are passionate about that. Amen? All right, so a father's warning against appreciating Christ. A father's warning against Christ plus circumcision. A father's warning against legalism. If you look in verse 16, Paul says, Therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink, or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration, or a Sabbath day. Now when you look at all of those things, let no one judge you regarding eating and drinking. It has to do with kosher foods. We talked about this before when we were looking at this. Kosher eating is a good way to eat. They tell you not to eat a bat or a mole. They also tell you not to eat pork. But they tell you the kind of meat that is clean to eat. They describe what kind of fish are clean to eat. And science will tell you that those are healthy foods. So there is nothing wrong with understanding dietary laws in the Old Testament and applying them to us. The issue is don't let anyone judge you. If you're going out this afternoon and you happen to have a lobster for lunch, now according to the book of Leviticus, that is forbidden because it does not have scales and it cannot expel the toxins that are in its system. But if you should happen to have a lobster, I don't want to be there in the next table judging you for eating your lobster. You see, the issue is not judging. For example, regarding the Shabbat, the Sabbath, I try to observe Saturday. It is hard. Because as always, Jesus is talking about people whose ox fall into the ditch. And it seems like more oxen fall into the ditch on Saturday. <laughs> There's always this problem, that problem, this need, that need. Can you help us? Look at this emergency. But I try as best I am able to reserve Saturday as a day of rest. But I will not allow you to judge me because when you judge me concerning whether I'm keeping the Sabbath or not, you are adding Christ to the equation, or the Sabbath to the equation. It is not Christ plus the Sabbath. It is Christ alone. I gave you some of these stories in the past. These are Seventh-day Adventist writings, and we have very good friends among the Seventh-day Adventists, but some are extreme, as you will see. One SDA writes, Sunday worship is the spiritual mark of the beast. Another says, Sunday is the beast's mark of authority, while Saturday is the Lord's true day. So please don't worship on Sunday. If you do, then that is a sign you love, serve, and worship Satan. Worship on Saturday, the biblical Sabbath, and you will prove that you love, serve, and worship the eternal God. Now that's judging. And with all kind reference, it stems from their leader, Ellen G. White, in the great controversy on page 448, Ellen G. White, Ellen G. White who was the founder of Seventh-day Adventism, says, what then is the change of the Sabbath to Sunday but the mark of the beast? So she actually started that whole notion. And I simply will not allow them to do that to me. I tell them in the first place, the Sabbath was never intended by God as a day to go to church. It was intended by God as a day to rest. And so I'm a better Sabbath keeper than you are. <laughs> I told you the story of my friend, uh, Bill, who was a Seventh-day Adventist pastor. And he called me up. I'll repeat the story for you. He called me up one day and said, oh, I'm all worn out. 
I said, why are you all worn out? He says, you know, Sabbath is something else. He said, we have Sabbath school in the morning, then we have church service, and then we have a potluck together at church. He said, by the time the Sabbath is over, I'm exhausted. And I said to him, you missed the whole point. Sabbath is a day of rest. And I said, I'm a better Sabbath keeper than you are. You're all worn out at the end of the Sabbath, running around, going to meetings and potluck and all the rest of it. Let no one judge you. Because if they are judging you, what they are doing is saying it is Christ plus the Sabbath, Christ plus the festivals, Christ plus kosher eating. Do not let anyone, verse 16, judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival, a new moon celebration or a Sabbath days. These are a shadow of the things that were to come. The reality, however, is found in Christ. I want to repeat the same thing that I repeated. That is a shadow. You may not be able to see it. The folks up in the balcony can see it. That is a shadow. I am casting the shadow. And according to Paul, Jesus is casting a shadow. And the shadow is what the Sabbaths tell us, what the festivals tell us, what new moons tell us. It's a shadow. The reality is Christ. So it is not Christ plus the Sabbath, it is Christ alone. It is not Christ plus kosher eating, it is Christ alone. It is not Christ plus the festivals, it is Christ alone. So when we celebrate celebrate Shavuot, which is the festival of Pentecost, we are not adding it to our spirituality. It is only a shadow. Christ is the reality. Will you give me an amen? Amen. Amen.